Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Rick, your singer, well coach, and today we're going to be talking about how the bank is the riskiest business in the world. In fact, let's talk about this idea. That's the idea that the bank is the bad babysitter's club. You remember, that's right, when you was little and, and mama took you and dropped you off with that bad babysitter. I remember her name was Sylvia. I still remember her like it was yesterday. She was mean, wouldn't let me go outside, mean mugging me. I was like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, mama, don't drop me off over there. And that's the way your money is screaming and kicking when you drop it off in these minister bank accounts. So let's talk about it for a little while. All right, the riskiest business is that of the bad babysitter's club. Better known as your local bank. You said, Ricky, those are harsh words. Ah, you don't know what harsh is. Let me tell you the first thing that happens with the bank. As soon as you leave, as soon as you leave, as soon as you sign up for a bank account and you walk off, the first thing they do is you put in a thousand dollar deposit and the bank is able to get $10,000 uh, worth of credits for you that they can go out and build some more buildings with. So that's like your kid saying, oh, I don't recognize all these other people, all these other children around here. You dropped me off, mommy. You dropped me off, pops. And now it's 10, 10 times us just like that. That's the rules to banking. The rules to banking is that every dollar that you deposit, the bank can get back $10,000 for it. Now, that, what does that mean? Another building is going up. What does that mean? Another edifice is going up. What does that mean? Some more vacations are being taken. What? Taken at your, because of your money. All right? Your deposits is what sends the bankers on, you know, you ever heard of banker's hours? Of course, the bankers got plenty of hours. Every time you give them a dollar, they get back. They can uh, go out and borrow ten. Every time you give them a thousand dollars, they can go out and borrow ten thousand dollars. So that's number one. Your deposit means what they are allowed to borrow. Okay. The second problem is that your children, your money. This is what they're complaining about right now. If your money can talk, this is what it be saying to you. You know what? I can't go outside. What does that mean? The money is not allowed to circulate. Why? Because it's all wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in some little minuscule bank account. In other words, I can't breathe! I can't breathe! I can't breathe! That's what your money is telling you. I can't breathe. I can't go outside. I can't circulate. In other words, I'm just sitting here dormant every day doing the same mundane thing. The only thing that I get is a little bit of interest. I'm all, I mean, I'm almost worth nothing. I can't, I can't matriculate. I can't get around. Now, this is violating a serious scripture. And let me give you the scripture. The scripture is Ecclesiastics 11 and 1. And it says, Cast thy bread upon the waters. Surely it shall return unto thee in many days. What does that mean? Circulation. Money needs to circulate in order for you to get money back. So what does that mean? That means that you need to understand that your bank account is not capable of bringing money back into the bank because it's, you signed, when you signed up for this, you signed up for no circulation. You told your children that it's okay that they can't go outside. Now, you, you know how it was when you was a little boy, when you was a little girl, and you was with them bad babysitters, just like the bank is. You remember that? You remember how you was in the house and you was looking at the other little kids and how the ice cream truck would come down the street and you saying that I scream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream, but you couldn't get none. Why? Because the bad babysitter said, sit still. You can look out the window and you can look at it and you got and, and little kids out there. And you can't go outside. You know, and when we was little, we were so doggone poor until we couldn't even we didn't even have a swimming pool, right? So you know what we did? We took the fire hydrant and we put a and we put a board inside of the fire hydrant because it'd be Calling hot in the summertime in Chicago, and on the west side of Chicago, and we put take the fire hydrant and we would put it and we would allow the water to sprinkle up into the air, and then we would all just run up under the water and have fun out there dancing in the middle of the street, having a good time and stuff like that. But not, uh, 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 uh. not you, because you was in the house and the bad babysitter said you can't go outside. All right, you know the song. I 
want to go outside. I want to go outside. I just want to go outside. All right? That's what your money's saying right now. It's in a bank, but the bank is a bad babysitter. So the bank is like, no, you can't go. No, you can't go. No, you can't go. Why is the answer always no to a bad babysitter? Can I get something else to eat? No! Can I go outside? Can I just sit on the porch? Ah, uh ah! -uh! That's the way your money is right now. And you violate a major scripture. The scripture is Ecclesiastics 11 and 1. And it says, cast thy bread upon the water, your money, upon the water, and it shall return unto you in many days. Give a portion of seven and another portion of eight, and it's going to come back to you. See, that's the problem with money in a bank account. It doesn't, it doesn't circulate. You can't breathe. Can't breathe. Can't breathe. That's the second problem with a bank account. The third problem with a bank account is that it grows too doggone slow. All right? It doesn't keep up with inflation. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? In other words, uh, over the last couple of, um, let me see, do I have a, no, let me, let me wipe this off. Over the last couple of months, just here, over the last couple of months of this year, gas prices have gone from $2 to $4. Just over the last couple of months. Gas prices, all right? Gas was two bucks up to four bucks in just two months, all right? But your account is growing at 1% interest, and that's generous, all right? At 1% interest, it's taking 72 years for your money to double. That's a serious problem. If gas prices went from $2 to $4 in two months, and it's taking 72 years for your money to double, your money can't keep up. Are right, you listening to me? It's like being in a race. Everybody else is running a 100-yard dash, and they're running in 9 seconds, 10 seconds, 11 seconds, and you're running it in 25 seconds. You can't keep up. You can't keep up. It's just like somebody racing in a rocket and you're on a tricycle. You can't keep up. You can't keep up. If your money could talk to you, it would say, I'm tired of being left in the dust. I'm tired of being left in the dust. Listen, if you want to learn more about money principles and how this thing really, really works, just go to financialiqchallenge.com. Financialiqchallenge.com. And we will teach you money principles that will change your life for generations to come. You know how we operate? We operate in prosperity, not just prosperity. In other words, we, we generate the kind of money that lasts when we're gone. We generate the kind of money that keeps up with inflation. We generate the kind of money that circulates. In fact, we have a circulation program that brings us back four times all the money that we put out. That's right. It's time for the circulator, not time for the percolator. It's time for the circulator. You later. So if you want your money to circulate, if you want it to breathe again, if you want to get out of the bad babysitter's club, just click the link below, financialiqchallenge.com. This is Brother Rick Williams. It's been a plum, please, and pleasure, as well as a privilege. And remember that stellar is as stellar does. I'll see you at the top.